Today we'll take a closer look at how to grow scallions. Sometimes we call these green onions or bunching onions too, along with some other names and we'll cover those in just a minute. So all of the following footage was taken from my personal gardens over the past four years. Most of the video is going to be spent on how to get your onions growing. So I will show you how to grow them from seed, from transplants, from just cutting them and also letting them reseed in your garden. We will also look at watering and feeding, problems and pests, how and when to harvest, and ways that you can use them in your kitchen. You can get your scallions growing in many different ways. We can start our seeds indoors and then transplant them outdoors. We can also sow the seeds outdoors directly into the soil. We can start our onions from cuttings so that you don't have to plant them from seed. We can also let them reseed naturally in your garden. So scallions or green onions are often referred to also as bunching onions, salad onions, or spring onions. Spring onion is often used differently depending on where you live. Sometimes a spring onion is referred to an onion which is meant to form a bulb, but it's just harvested early. So that it does not form the bulb, but it looks very similar and is used as a scallion. So whenever I start to plant my vegetable and herb seeds, I like to refer to the All New Square Foot Gardening book to get me going. And in the back of the book, there are some excellent charts to help you along. These charts will refer to your frost dates. If you don't know your frost dates, I will leave them in the description area below the video. And the Farmer's Almanac website is an excellent resource to find out your frost dates. So according to this chart, and also a chart that I can pick up from my local county extension office, I know that I can get my onions started indoors or outdoors between the months of February and April. So I like to start my scallions indoors in late January, early February. I like to grow the evergreen, long white bunching onions. I also found online that this particular onion has been known to survive winters as low as negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's very winter hardy. So let's take a closer look at temperatures. So here are the germination times and temperatures for onion seeds. For instance, if you were to sow your seeds when your soil temperature is around 50 degrees Fahrenheit, you can expect for 98% of the seed that you put in the soil to germinate in 13 days. Let's go on down the chart a little bit here and we notice that at 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 99% will germinate in 5 days. So this is a very good soil temperature for your onion seed to germinate. And then if we go down a little bit further, once you get into the very hot temperatures, you'll notice there's a great drop off in the rate of germination. So this is a chart that you will need to adapt to wherever it is you live, okay? I know in my climate that I can, uh, my soil temperature is nice and around 68 degrees Fahrenheit on up to around 86 degrees Fahrenheit from let's say um, around May to June and then it starts to get pretty hot there in July. So use this information so that you can find out when is the best time for you to get your seed started. So once a year, and that would be, as I mentioned, in January and early February, I will start my seeds indoors. We keep our temperature at around 70 degrees indoors, and I'll just use a plastic cup. I might drill holes in the cup. I might use an ice pick and um, poke holes in the bottom of the cup, but some way you need to make sure you have drainage in your cup, and we'll use a seed starting mix. I always like to use a seed starting mix. And so I'm simply just going to fill the cup up and we'll moisten the soil. I like to put a, another cup underneath it which does not have holes so that it will catch some of the water whenever I water the onions. And I'll just sprinkle out some seed. I have read that onion seed is really um, only good for a year. Uh, so I don't know that I've experienced that myself, but I do try to always use fresh onion seed. So I like to put it in my windowsill after I've covered it up with just a little bit of soil and I'll keep them misted until they germinate. And then I'll just water them, keeping them in my windowsill. In about um, late February, uh, maybe early March, I will start to move them outdoors where they get constant sunlight and this is what's known as hardening off. I'm just trying to get them acclimated to a new climate so it's going to be actually much cooler outdoors than it is inside my house. And the onions do not mind cooler temperatures so 
only if it's going to snow or something like that will I move them indoors because they're still kind of young and I don't want to expose them to something too harsh but um, most of the time I slowly will move them out maybe the first day for a couple of hours and the second day for um, maybe all day and pretty much they do, will stay outside until I'm able to transplant them into a container so now it's time to transplant them into a container. This is in early March and I'll just take some compost and I'll go ahead and mix that lightly into the soil and I want to make sure it's nice and loose. The soil needs to be loose and a good potting mix so that it has adequate drainage. I will wet the soil nicely and you see how this water just drains beautifully through this soil and this is very important. You notice that it's not real compacted and there's no puddling on top of the soil. So now I can separate out my onions and this is a rather tedious process and this is not my favorite project of the year <laughs> but I do like to get a jump start on the season and that's the only reason why I'm doing this. I start onions early and I also start parsley early. So now I'm just going to separate them. A lot of people like to give it a haircut. In other words, they're going, they trim off the top of their onions and just to kind of make it easier to do this but this is fine for me I don't really have a problem with it you can also soak it in water and this will help remove some of the soil and um, just make it easier to separate so with a skewer or an ice pick I like to just um, make a straight hole down into the soil and we'll just compress the soil around it the nice moist soil and we want to make sure the roots have good contact so I usually like to just hold the leaves straight up and then force the roots down into the soil I don't want to force them down too deep um, but just in between two fingers seems to do the trick and so they'll basically look something like this once I've got them all done. That takes me about 30 minutes. <laughs> and um, it won't be long. Um, just a few weeks later, they will root down and they'll be upright. And then on the outside, I notice there are some leaves which are browning and falling off. And that's fine. That just tells me that the onion is actually rooting down. Now off to the right, I had also started some seeds outdoors directly into the container. And that's so that when I've used up this supply of scallions, these will be ready to harvest. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how to plant these from seed. So again, we're just going to make sure this, the soil is nice and loose. So I'll go ahead and use my favorite seeds. These are very easy to find. And we'll just sprinkle some out onto the surface. So on the other side of the pot, I'm planting cilantro and I'm just going to go ahead and water all of these in. I didn't really need to sprinkle soil on top of the onion seeds because the water is going to force the seed down into the soil because the soil is loose and it's not compacted. So just a few weeks later, they are up and um, we had received a lot of rain. I kept them moist also. I misted them regularly and that's what you'll need to do to get the seeds going. If it's dry, your seeds are not just going to come up unless you're having a lot of rain, so make sure that you keep them misted. And I pretty much will just sprinkle out some scallion seeds all through my container garden. You'll find them growing just about anywhere with nasturtiums and basil and parsley and everything. Now down in my other garden, in my raised bed, I also plant them behind each other. So you'll notice here in the front I had some growing. Well behind them I'm also going to plant some more just sprinkling them high from above and then I will cover these with just a tiny bit of soil and water those in as well. Now another way that some people like to grow scallions and it's kind of fun for the kids, you can keep the little root in of your green onions, put them in water and they will regrow the green part and then you can put them in soil. I don't grow them this way for my consumption because I like to use the white tip. That's my, probably my favorite part of the scallion. So, um, but this is something kind of fun and if, if you like using mostly the green tips, well there you go. There's an easy way for you to grow scallions for the green leaves okay now the fourth way that we can get our onions growing is um, maybe you you have a garden and you grow most of your things directly into the ground you may just want to let it go and reseed or of course you can do that in a raised bed too but I typically use my raised beds and my containers for more controlled plantings um, this year I am starting a garden where I'll just let things uh, reseed on their own so an onion these white bunching onions that particular seed that I showed you you can just let it flower 
and once that dries you can uh, break it off and just throw it into the ground and they will reseed that way and that's a real easy uh, way to grow your onions you can expect for your onions to form a flower like this once they have uh, really over matured past the point of where you would want to use them and for most people that will happen uh, into the second growing season uh, but again it depends on your climate a lot of times well actually even when I lived in Florida I lived there it was very hot mine would bolt within the first year so I would notice flowers on my scallions there uh, my first year so um, just know that that little flower can give you more onions the following year. Of course, that does again depend on your climate. So now let's take a look at watering and feeding your scallions. Once they have started to come up, you'll want to just gently mist them with water and um, just keep doing this so that they don't dry out. This is a very critical stage of germination, especially as you start to get into those summer months or the really, where it's really hot. Um, you want to make sure that you keep them watered. I also like to use just a very small, like a child's watering can and water directly at the base of my onions. And I basically just feed it, because I grow these in containers, I'll feed them just um, water soluble fertilizer about every 10 days. So I don't have many pests or diseases with the um, scallions at all. I've only had one that I can personally remember and it was the onion aphid. So here is a picture of what onion aphids look like and um, it took me a while to figure out that I was even having a problem with these onions but I ended up just pulling them out and I didn't use them because they were so unhealthy by the time I noticed there was a problem. There's also the onion fly maggot. This is a picture of what you might find inside the leaf of an onion. Uh, the fly just lays its eggs there and then they burrow down into the onion leaves and can destroy your onions that way. But those are two things. Uh, like I said, I haven't had a problem with the onion fly maggot. Now, a third problem you may have is inconsistent watering. I noticed that one time I went on vacation for about a week, we experienced a lot of rain while I was gone, and the onions took up a lot of water, so the tops started falling over. They actually grew a lot more, too, and so they were a little over mature for me. You know, they're still edible, and I still ended up using the bottom portions, uh, but the top of the leaves were just too... Um, had too much water in them and they weren't good and I'll show you that later in the video how those can look. Now the of course inconsistent watering also means not enough water so a lot of times your onions can dry out especially if they've just germinated and they're starting to come up. Uh, if, they've not, if they're not receiving the water like from rain or either you misting them they will dry up and just shrivel up and go away. Now this is an example where two survive they, well, they did fine, but do know that if it's really hot and dry, your scallions will dry up. So make sure you keep them watered. Now the fun part, we get to harvest them. And uh, scallions can be harvested anywhere between 60 and 100 days of growth. I like them closer to the 60 to 70 day mark. They're nice and crisp. They're small. They're not overgrown. The leaves are usually um, still crisp and they're not over um, like soft and slimy, what I, what I like to call them. And a lot of times we'll just grab them at the very base and you can pull the whole thing up. Now I'll go ahead and let you know too that if you don't want to use the white tips you can just cut these off, cut off the green part and they'll regrow. But personally for me, um, my favorite part is the white tip so <laughs> that's the part I go for. So just grab it at the base and pull it up and that's how you harvest it. Now if they're really mature, maybe they have gotten closer to that 100 day mark, you'll want to ease them up slowly so that the white tip doesn't stay below. Okay, and that's like I said because that's the part I like to use. So just remove those outer leaves that are dead and they'll be beautiful. Now this is around 70 days here. This was actually the planting I did for you earlier in the video. This is how they look. This is um, my perfect time to harvest them. 
And after I harvest them, I just like to cut the roots off and I'll put them in some water on my windowsill because I generally harvest them the day I'm going to use them. You can also wash them and put them in the refrigerator if you plan to use them maybe within the week or something. Now let's take a look at how we're going to use them in the kitchen. So I always cut off the little tip, the little root tip, and like I showed you earlier, you can just regrow that if you want. It's great fun for the kids. And then I'm going to just, on a very gentle diagonal angle here, I'm going to go ahead and slice them. I like to slice up to about, uh, right when you start to get into the green part of the green onion. Slicing them diagonally like that makes it a lot easier to separate them into little rings so that you can put them on all of your dishes. Of course, it's just a personal preference whether or not you want to go all the way up and use the entire green part of your scallion. That's, a, like I said, a personal preference. I'll show you here the reason why I don't always go all the way up the leaf here. And it's because sometimes if there's been like maybe a lot of rain or something, the end of those onions will be slimy and they'll have a lot of water in them. For, I'll show you here as I cut into the top portion here. Right here, you see there's some liquid coming out and that's why I don't always like to use the top portion and this is the part I really like right here. So this is nice and crisp. And so again, I'll just go ahead and cut off the root tip. And now I have a nice, um, the white part, the light green part, and then some of the dark green part. And there's just a lot of different variations of flavor here too. And I uh, probably use these more than just about any other herb that I grow. A lot of, mainly because it's just so easy to grow. For instance, um, just a few weeks ago, I cut some. This was a little bit more mature than I preferred, but I went ahead and cut those up and I put them on some sliders along with my first tomato that I'd harvested for the season. So there's some little turkey sliders there. They're really good in just about anything that you're cooking that's Asian related, like this is an Asian coleslaw on some fish. Uh, just like on a taco, a flour tortilla or something like that. And then of course for all the moms out there, make sure that you cook a lot of chili whenever you make your next pot of chili and the next day you can just toast some bread and then warm that chili up and put it on top of your toast and then put some cheese on top of there and broil that cheese down onto the chili so it melts nicely and then sprinkle it with some green onions. It's really good and it's a very fast and family friendly meal. So my kids love that so that's my next day leftover chili dish. <laughs> and of course green onions are good with beans and rice. We eat a lot of rice and beans in my house. They're good on eggs. Here are just some eggs cooked with salsa with a little bit of cilantro and green onion. And then some coconut milk soup. That's one of my favorite soups. A little bit of lime, some cilantro, and the green onion, of course. And then just some chicken burritos. A lot of green onion and cilantro on there. Uh, also some Cajun red beans and rice. Another family favorite. And who doesn't like wings? This is some Thai sticky wings, and they're real good on that. Also shrimp and grits for you southerners out there. A little good old plate of southern shrimp and grits. And sometimes I will also slice the these um, lengthwise and that's perfect for spring basil rolls. So I mentioned earlier about spring onions. So I'll talk briefly here about spring onions. This is an example of where I have a scallion and then I have a spring onion. This is actually called a red barren onion. And if you harvest it early before it actually forms a bulb, then um, you can use it as a scallion. And we also, like I said, call those spring onions. You can just pop them on your grill and so for instance here I was uh, I grilled them and then I chopped them up and I put them on steak sandwiches that we had grilled and that was great so for all of these recipes you're welcome to head on over to my channel and click on playlist and there you will find a complete playlist with all of these recipes for spring onions and I'm always adding to it as well. So for more of these complete and thorough videos that I've taken from my personal gardens over the past several years, you're welcome to head over to my channel where you can check those out. Remember always my videos have the rainbow in the bottom corner so you will know you're watching my videos and not someone else's so thank you so much for watching and y'all have a beautiful day